Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Dax for Humans. Now, if you've been watching since the beginning, you've only invested probably less than an hour in learning Power BI and Dax. But what if I told you that even in less than an hour, you've basically learned enough about Power BI and Dax to start solving some problems within Power BI that are pretty typical and pretty common, um, such as looking up values or doing running totals or maybe subtracting one row from the previous row. So in the next three videos, we're gonna be tackling all of those kind of practical examples and showing you how you've learned enough DAX to do those things. So we're gonna start with looking up values. Now, what I've done on here is that I have two table visuals. The only difference between them is I have my date column in this one. So this one has item, sum of price, sum of quantity, my date column, and then my sum of total cost. And because I have this date column in here, it makes each of these rows unique. And so this is actually a representation of exactly what I have in my data model over here, I have the same exact five rows. Now in this one, I'm not, I don't have the date column in it. So now the, this table is summarizing this information by the item. So banana, grapefruit, and pickle. Okay, so looking up values. So in the original thinking for DAX video that I, that I uh, presented out earlier in this series, I mentioned that Excel thinks in terms of cells. And you reference those cells using formulas like A1 or B2 or C3. Now contrast that to DAX, where DAX does not think in terms of cells. DAX thinks in terms of tables. But that does not mean that using DAX, you can't get to individual cell values. So let's take a look at that. So let's say that you wanted to get the minimum amount for pickle of total cost, just pickle. Well, you can create a measure for that using the techniques that I've described in those previous videos. And that's this measure right here. So I have a card visual. I'm using this pickle min max. And so if we take a look at that visual or that measure, you can see that the code is very simple. I get my table. I then filter that table to where the item is just pickle. So now I just have these two rows um, are in context or filtered for this measure. And then I can get the minimum value from the filtered table for total cost. And that indeed returns back to 7.98 which is this row right here. Now, if I wanted the maximum value, I could change this to be max X instead of min X, hit enter. And now you can see that I have 15.96, which is in fact 15.96 right here. Okay, so that's the basics of looking things up in DAX, in a table. If you wanna look up an individual cell, you get the table, you filter that table down to the rows you want, then you use an XX aggregator in order to get the, uh, get the information you need. Okay, but we can get fairly sophisticated with the filters that we use. And in fact, get it filtered down to even a single row. So I have another measure over here called banana quantity three. And let's say that we wanted to get very specific about our filters. We only wanted to get return rows. We wanted the total cost for only the row where the item is banana and the quantity is three. So this row has banana and also five. So we can do that by filtering. So if I take this measure and I drag it into my field well for that card visual, so you can see I get 8.97, which is indeed this row and that total cost right there. Now the way we do that is we have this banana quantity three measure. We again, we can start out with our table. We then filter the table where the item equals banana in this case. And then we use the double ampersand and say quantity equals three. The double ampersand being an illogical and. So we're only getting the rows where the item is banana and the quantity is equal to three. We then use our max x aggregator across that filtered table to get the total cost. Now to prove that there's only one row in that filtered table, if I change this to min x instead of max x, you can see our number doesn't change. So we've actually filtered, this filter table only contains a single row where item equals banana and the quantity equals three. But we can get even more complex with these kind of logical functions when we're filtering down uh, our tables. So let's say that we wanted to say, we want to get the maximum total cost 
for the rows where the item is banana or grapefruit and the quantity is three. So you can see we have banana three, we have grapefruit three, and so we should end up if we get the maximum total cost of 14.97. So for that, we have this one. And this isn't that much more complicated and I'll show you in a minute. But again, if we take this and we drag it into our field well, we indeed see that it returns 14.97. So how do we do that? Well, we use this var to get our table. So we have a table and then we filter that table where, as you can see here, I've enclosed these in parens. So this separates this logical statement from the next logical statement. So this is saying item equals banana, and the double pipe character is our or, our logical or in DAX. The item is grapefruit. So filter the table where the item equals banana or the item equals grapefruit, and then that's one logical statement, and then and the quantity must equal three. We then use our XX aggregator and we get back for the total cost and we get back 14.97. Now again, to show you that there's actually two rows in this filtered table, one for banana and one for grapefruit, what I can do is I can switch this to be minix. If I enter that, then I definitely should get 8.97, which I do. The last item that I'll, that I'll show you in terms of these is what I call a double lookup. And let's, we're going to not use this uh, card visual any longer. We're going to use these visuals here, these table visuals. So let's say that for each of these items, I wanted to get the total cost on the latest date that's in the table. So for banana, that would be January 11th and 14.95. For grapefruit, there's only one row, so it would be 14.97 on January 14th. And for pickle, it would be January 10th and be 15.96. Well, what that looks like is this measure right here. Double lookup. And again, you can see it's very simple. So I'll first, I get my table. Then I'm gonna get my max date from that table by using max X, X of the table and get in the date. And then I'm going to, for my result, I'm gonna use max X, X again, but I'm gonna filter that table where the date equals my max date and then grab my total cost. So if I add this to this, table down here, you can see I do indeed get 14.95, 14.97, and 15.96. Now, of course, if I wanted to say the min date, min X, I should get the opposite results, except for grapefruit should still return 14.97. And that's exactly what happens. So now I'm grabbing the minimum date for this banana, for the banana rows, I give it the minimum date, which is January 2nd, and return the total cost of 8.97. And same with pickle, I get 7.98. But for grapefruit, I get 14.97 because there is only one row. So the min and the max are the same. Now, what do you think might happen if I add this to this table visual up here? Remember, all of these rows are going to be filtered to just one single row because I have my date column here, which makes all of these rows unique. Well, what happens is what you would expect. I'm going to get the same exact answer for my double lookup as I do for my sum of total cost. And that is because, right, I don't ha only have a single banana row in context here, so when this double lookup runs, the maximum date in context, or filtered, is Monday, January 2nd. And so it's going only gonna have that single row when it does the second max X. So in this max X, this min X for date, if it doesn't matter if it's min X or max X, because there's only one row in context, and so it doesn't matter. So therefore, for each row, I'm just going to return back the total cost for that row. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Um, but I'm, this is the various different ways that you can do lookups within Power BI. Now, I did promise you that I would show you how I got these measures into this nice display folder called lookup. Well, the way you do that is you go to your model view, and then you have to expand your table, and you pick out your measure, let's say banana or grapefruit quantity 3, and then in this properties window, you'll see that there's this item called display folder. And then I had in there, I have it, it says lookup. Now if I change this to lookup one and hit enter, well now that measure shows up in a display folder called lookup one. So I can change it back and put it back in the lookup folder. So these are called display folders within Power BI. They're, they're handy little features that allow you to organize your measures. And they're very useful when you get a lot of measures in your data model. 
That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at running total. Thank you and have a good day.